Hello and welcome everyone, Richard Schneeman here. If you've been programming in Ruby for some time, you have come across nil quite a bit. So in this section, we are going to cope with dealing with nil. Uh, you might have come into the scenario previously where you're pulling a value out of a database. So uh, we say user.where, name is richard.first, and then we put user.name. So, you know, what, what are we going to get when we put user.name? Well, you know, hopefully you're going to get Richard because that's the name we we're just looking for. But, you know, maybe we're looking for a um, user that doesn't exist yet or maybe they uh, remove themselves from our service. So user uh, where name is Ruby dot first um, puts user dot name. We don't uh, we can't be guaranteed to get a user there. Um, so we might have gotten nil back. So we're going to get this error undefined method name for nil class. One of the most common errors ever in the history of Ruby is a no method error on the nil class. So <clears throat> nil is our constant enemy, or not necessarily an enemy, but we constantly have to be concerned over whether or not we are getting a value back from our functions. Uh, so it is really, really important to us as Ruby programmers that we are capable of dealing with this. So to illustrate this um, another way, I have created a function here, or a method, as you might like to call it, and it is named number greater than 26. In this function, you pass a number, and if the number is greater than 26, it returns um, number is greater than 26. Otherwise, it will return back nope. So it what happens when we run number greater than 26 and pass in a value of 88? Well, uh, the number is greater than 26. Uh, so 88 is greater than 26. Makes sense. What about if we pass in 2 into that exact same method? Well, 2 is less than 26, so you're going to get nope. Uh, hopefully you were able to follow along with that. If not, you know, maybe try copying this code into your IRB and seeing uh, what, uh, what you get. So as we go along, we might be pulling maybe a number from the database, and we aren't exactly sure if it is an actual number or not. So you might end up with a nil object. So what happens when we run this? So number greater than 26, and we pass in nil. Hopefully, you guessed, we're going to get a no method error. So again, one of those common errors, no method error, undefined method, um, greater than for nil nil class. So um, nil doesn't know how to compare itself to 26. So uh, nil has kind of a, a major weakness that we can use to combat it. Well, and again, we're not really combating it. We're just you know, coping with it, working with it. Um, so nil behaves like false in Boolean operators. So whenever we do um, if true, if false, if nil, th those are the only um, nil and false will behave like false, and that's it. Everything else will be truthy in the entire history of Ruby. Uh, so when I say Boolean operators, these are what I mean. On the left-hand side, we have ampersand, ampersand. On the right-hand side, we have pipe, pipe. You might also say bar, bar. Um, on the left-hand side, the ampersands uh, correspond to a logical and. And the pipe, pipe will correspond to a logical or. So a lot of times, I'll just skip. Instead of saying ampersand, ampersand, I will say and, and instead of saying pipe, pipe, or bar, bar, I'll just say or. So let's, uh, you know, and again, we're going to be using those most commonly with if. Uh, so we can protect, use those to protect against nil, or use nil um, to, and bend nil to our uh, own uh, devices and own uses. But first, we are going to talk about some of that Boolean logic we just covered, if, if you haven't seen it before. So um, we're going to talk about or logic. Um, so if we have something that is true or true, what do you think the result is going to be? It's going to be either true or false. Um, you, you, you might be hungry and you might say, you know, I want, I will be happy if I get burgers or fries. So if, you know, if tr yeah, true, yes, you got burgers and true, yes, you got um fries, so uh, burgers or fries, uh, what is going to be the result of that? Well, the result is going to be true. 
Um, what about uh, true or false? So in maybe you got burgers, but not fries. Are you 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 going to be happy? You said you'd be happy if you got burgers or fries. So you got burgers, but no fries. So true or false? Well, the result is true. You said you'd be happy if you got either or. So um, if you got burgers, then you're going to be happy. Or if you got fries, then you're going to be happy. Or if you got both, then you're going to be super happy. You know, but it doesn't matter. You're you're still happy. Uh, so that's kind of a contrived real world example of the or operator. Um, but the, the most important thing to kind of notice with that is one true in a chain of ors will always return true. So if you say false or false or false or false or false or true, the answer is the result is always going to be true. It doesn't matter where that true is in that string of ors, but it's always going to be true. You might say, you know, I want uh, I want a red or green or blue or yellow or orange crayon. And if you get any one of those crayons, then you will be happy. So that that is true. And that is or in a nutshell. Uh, so we mentioned that nil behaves like false. So um, we can substitute false and nil um, most of the times in our, our Boolean operators. So nil or nil or nil or nil or true. Uh, will return true. So it doesn't matter how many nils, as long as if we're in a chain of ors, then we're always going to return true. So um, we'll just leave you with that little bit of logic and uh, talk about and for just a second. So ampersand, ampersand, logical and. So if I say I'm only going to ha be happy if I get burgers and fries. So if I, in this scenario, I got burgers and I got fries, am I going to be happy? Yes. So uh, that's true. True and true is going to result in logical true. What about we say, I want only be happy if I get burgers and fries, and it's true that I got burgers, but I didn't get any fries. So um, I'm only going to be happy burgers and fries. Well, you guessed it, false. Um, because I said I made the condition, that and condition, both of those have to um, be satisfied in order for me to be happy. Maybe I'm feeling extra picky today. Um, so whenever you are using and, one false in a chain of ands will always return false. So we can do true and true and true and true and true and false, and that's going to result in false. It doesn't matter where that false is. Um, you know, it, you, you, you are using and is almost kind of like uh, stating a demand, you know. Um, we, we want pizza for all the hostages and uh, Super Bowl tickets for everyone. I, you know, I don't know. that you, The and is kind of a demand. It just happens to rhyme. So um, because of this, Ruby will always return false the first time it runs into a false while evaluating a series of ands. Um, what? Okay, what does that mean? Well, let's take a look. So here's that exact same uh, syntax that we had before. We are going to have true and true and false and true and false. And so what Ruby is going to do, it's going to say, all right, we're going to check the first value. So hmm, this is true. It's, we need to check the next one and, and see if it's false or not. So that one's true. And it says, all right, well, all right, we're going to need to check the next one. So it goes to the next one and it says, whoa, you're false. And we just have a bunch of ands. So anything and false is always going to be false. So there's no way anything in, in this um, this chain could possibly change that. So we're going to just, we're going to go ahead and return false. Um, and Ruby never ever needs to evaluate the rest of the, those um, conditions because there's no way false and something can never be equal to true. It's kind of odd to say in just these abstract terms. Um, but yeah, there you go. Uh, so nil also happens to behave like false. So if you say in the exact same thing, you replace one of those falses with nils, we're going to hit true, it's going to go to the next one, we're going to hit true, it's going to go to the next one, and then it's going to say, whoa, 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 you're you're not true, or you're not truthy, so you're nil. It, and it turns out that nil behaves like false, so nil is falsy, false is falsy, is um, what we, we might say. And it's going to say, all right, well, nil if we have nil and something, it can never, ever, ever be true. So we're just going to go ahead and return nil now. So um, again, we're using nil. Those never, ever get checked. Anything at the, at the end of the string of ands. So we can actually use this. But how? 
we're going to go back to our example. So um, before we kind of got on that uh, Boolean operator tangent here, we have a number greater than 26. We're passing a nil. So if we, if we take our code, um, you know, yes, we're still, we haven't fixed it yet. We're still getting an undefined method error. Um, if we take our code and we put just that, that comparison operator where we're actually getting the error and we say nil is greater than 26, well, we're going to get an error. We're going to get the exact same error. But what if we put nil and nil is greater than 26? It's like that, what? What's, what's going on? What do, you, what do you as the viewer think is going to happen? So first, we are going to check the first value and ask, are you truthy? It turns out nil is not truthy. So are we going to check the next one? No, we don't. So we return nil immediately. So we never even check the next half. So whenever we whenever we um, ran that this code, we didn't get an error, which is awesome. You know, we had even though we had nil greater than twenty six, we never called that uh, because we didn't need to since nil was already uh, falsy. So if we put that into our code, we can say if number. Um, so basically, if if number exists and that number is greater than twenty six. So so if the number is truthy, so any any number that exists will be truthy, and the number is greater than 26, then we're going to output number is greater than 26. Otherwise, we're going to output nope. So as we evaluate this, we're going to put in nil. So if nil and nil greater than 26, the return of that is going to be nil, and nil behaves like false. So the result is going to be nope. Okay, that was a bit of a mouthful. Uh, if you kind of got lost along the way, Fire up, uh, fire up a console and try to run through that yourself or, or some IRB. Uh, before we go on, we are going to have just a quick little little logic check. So if we have this statement here, if true puts hello world, else puts nope. What happens when we run this? Hopefully you said puts hello world or we get the string of hello world. Yeah, but what about if bang true puts hello world, else puts nope? So uh, you might not have seen this previously. If we have the bang operator in a true or false um, scenario, then it is going to negate, it is going to do the opposite. So if by saying bang true, we are saying not true. So even if I'm actually reading this off in Ruby syntax, I would say, if not true, put hello, puts hello world, else puts nope. So what's the What's, what is not true? Well, not true happens to be false, so the result of this is going to be nope. All right, so um, that's all well and good. Uh, we can use this with active record. So we had the scenario where we're pulling a user from our database and up, oh, you know, maybe that user deleted themselves or, or unsubscribed from our service. And now we're, you know, now even though we were expecting a user, we're not getting one anymore. Um, so we can use that, uh, the, the knowledge that, um, a nil value is going to behave like false. We can use that to protect our, uh, calling of user.name. So if user is truthy, so if user exists is kind of a, kind of another way to say that, uh, puts user.name. So as long as user is not nil, then we will put user.name. Uh, so awesome! Congratulations, we did it. We uh, we circumvented the evil forces of nil. But can is there is there maybe a way we can check that a little bit more explicitly? So here we can say if not user dot nil puts user dot name. So basically, if the user is not nil, then we're going to put the user dot name. That that makes a little bit more sense to me. A little bit more uh, semantic sense. And again, we're using the the bang operator to negate. Um, so that covers nil, but sometimes we can pull arrays from the database and, you know, they might be empty. If we check dot nil on them, then it'll say no, because an empty array is, well, it's an empty array. It is something. It's not nothing. Nil is nothing. Uh, to check for this, we can find out if, um, our array is going to be empty. So here we have uh, user dot where name is Richard, and we're not calling first, we're not calling last. So we here we have an array of users. So um, if not users dot empty, or if users dot empty is n if users is not empty, then we can run our code. 
and that will protect us from that uh, scenario. So you might find that a little confusing that we have two different operators for, for two different scenarios. Um, well, you will be happy to know that you can also just use blank if you're using Rails. So nil dot blank question mark is going to return true. Empty array dot uh, blank is going to return true. An empty string dot blank is going to return true. An empty hash dot blank is going to return true. If you put anything in any one of those and you call dot blank into it, it will return false. So here we have a string with hello there. Um, so that is going to return false because it is not blank. Um, and similarly, we can, instead of, whoops, there we go, instead of using dot nil question mark or dot empty question mark, we can just use dot blank and that covers both of those scenarios. So you don't even have to think about, um, what you're getting back from your from active record all you all you would do is um, is is check explicitly if it's blank so a uh, little heads up blank is part of active support so you're not going to be able to use it unless you also have active support enabled um, and active support is part of rails so as you are just using uh, rails you will have access to blank but if you just fire up fired up an IRB console right now then you would not have access to active support or that blank method. So uh, not users.blank is still a little bit confusing. Can can we get rid of that bang? Uh, can we just say like users. Uh, something? Well, as a matter of fact, you can. You can say user.present or users.present. And this is this actually does the opposite of blank. So present is the opposite of blank. We're saying that that it exists. Um, I love using blank and present whenever whenever possible. Um, even if I'm pretty sure something will be nil or something is going to be um, an, an array, if I'm if I'm checking, I know I should check explicitly for for empty. Um, it has saved my uh, saved me quite a bit uh, just using blank and um, and and present whenever possible. Okay, so active support gives us one other method that we can use to uh, circumvent the evil forces of nil. Well, uh, we can, if we are pulling a value from our database, here we're pulling user, again, from our database, user named Richard, and we can call try and pass in the name of a method. So um, the name of our method here is actually name, so we are actually, if user exists, then we are going to call user.name. Otherwise, we're just going to return nil. So we have user.try name is going to return Richard. Perfect. And if we if we call nil.try name, it's going to return nil. So that's one way that if you just need a kind of a one line um, and you don't care whether you're getting nil back or not, then you don't have to use an if or, or an else. Um, you can use try. Ruby is also really, really flexible with if, uh, and we can actually use an inline if. So we can say um, puts user.name if user present. Uh, I love this syntax. I think it reads incredibly well. Um, if you want to use the if user.present puts user.name and syntax, that's perfectly fine. Maybe you're a little bit more familiar, a little bit more comfortable with that. Um, as we as we go along, being able to do these just kind of inline if statements, um, it, it can definitely make an improvement in the um, cleanliness, I guess, of your code. But for now, don't really worry about it. But if you see this, know that this is an, an inline if statement. Also, we have the ability to use unless, and unless is the opposite of if. So we can say unless user.blank, we're going to put the username. Um, again, you can do this inline just like, just like if. One quick uh, heads up, unless is very beautiful. It's very nice that we can just swap that logic around like that. But if you are going to use unless, don't use it with more than one argument, please. It can get really confusing. If you say unless user.blank or user.name equals Richard and user.movie double equals Zoolander, like that, it's it's confusing to understand what is going on there. It makes a little bit more sense using if. So, um those are some ways that we can uh, combat uh, combat nil. And generally, I say unless you have a good reason to uh, keep your unless conditions simple. 
Uh, so there you go. That's using unless. One last little logic trick before we go on. I know we've been talking about this for quite some time, but uh, this is definitely something that you will run into. You might not make use of it immediately. Um, but we, you're going to run into a scenario where you're going to want to find or create. So if the record exists, then you want to find it. If not, then you want to create it. It's a very common thing. So we can, we can actually use nil in order to help accomplish our goals. So if we say nil or hello, the result is going to be hello. So since nil is falsy, it's going to keep on looking for a truthy value. So hello is truthy. <clears throat> what if we were to say foo or hello? Well, the result is going to be foo because foo is truthy. So it's going to return immediately. And that's, and again, remember, or has the opposite behavior as a string of ors has the opposite behavior of a string of ands. So we can use this behavior uh, to say that if the user is nil, then create one. So um, first we're going to find a user if they exist. So user is equal to user.where name is richard.first. And then if the user exists, if that user variable is truthy, return immediately. Don't go, don't go forward in the code. If the user does not exist, go to the next statement in our, in our or chain, even though there's only two things in our or chain. And it just so happens that this statement will actually create that user and return a, a user uh, object. Perfect. So the next statement creates a user. And with all of that together, we have basically, we have successfully built a find or create mechanism using just one really simple or operator. Um, this is going to be something that you will definitely see. Again, maybe you won't use it immediately, but it, it's pretty convenient. Uh, we can do the same trick with a slightly different syntax. Um, so this is... Uh, something that you probably haven't seen before, but again, likely will. We're going to set a number equal to uh, 27. So now at this point in time, the number is 27, which is not false or nil. Uh, and then we're going to say or equals to 28. So do we check the next statement? Do we go to the next statement? Well, no, we don't. Since the number is, is 27, which is not false or nil, we are going to return immediately. So um, since we return immediately, we're not running equals 28. Makes sense. Um, what about if number starts off as nil? So number's nil. Now do we check the next statement? Well, <clears throat> Yes. So since uh, since number is nil, it's falsy. We're going to keep on going, looking for a truthy value. Since 28 is truthy, it is not nil or false, then we are going to say number is equal to 28 now. So we're saying or equal to 28. Even if I was going to read this off, I would say um, number is equal is... Actually, I don't know if I ever have read that off before. Number is or, or equal to 28. Um, so if number exists, it's going to be equal to itself. Otherwise, it's going to be equal to 28 is one way to think about that. So the result of that is going to be 28. So on the top, if I say user is equal to user or user.create, that is the same thing as saying user or equal user.create. There you go. Uh, if you run into this, then maybe just take a take a step back and uh, think about what's going on in terms of, okay, we see an or, um, is the value of user true, is it false, and are we going to keep on going? So I, to recap, we can deal with nil by using the and trick. Uh, so we can say something, you know, nil and the operator we, we want to use, or we can uh, just use if or we can also use the, the blank as well as present methods that Rails gives us. So we can use if and present. Um, or, you know, we can just be happy that we live in this wonderful, crazy, beautiful Ruby world and uh, use neat things like the or equals trick, uh, which I love uh, and, and use quite a bit. Uh, so in the next section, we are going to talk about modules. Hopefully, uh, didn't lose you too much talking about all those uh, ifs, elses, trues, and falses. Uh, but stay tuned, and you're going to learn a little bit more about Ruby modules.